rule Britannia. Britannia rules it. Hi. Welcome, James from Ingvid. Ingvid? Yes, Ingvid. Today I'm going to do a lesson on British slang. We have students from both parts of the world uh, that are in England and uh, students that are in the Americas learning English. We have them all over the place. I specifically said England and America because the other day I had a student walk up to me and I forgot their name and I'm so sorry. And they were, and they were saying, I was watching British television and it was like learning British, English all over. I didn't understand. There was so much English slang. Could you do a lesson on English slang? So here we are. So this is for those people who enjoy learning English and want to branch out because to be honest, if you've learned American English and you watch British English, it's going to actually help you with American English. What? British English is very different in its slang and whatnot. So you're going to have to learn to pay attention. And that attention or concentration will help you when you can use it learning American. And the same works in the reverse. If you learn British English and you start hearing Americans talk, <laughs> sorry, like, I'm from Texas. <laughs> You're going to go, what? You will learn to pay attention and you will be able to expand your English. Because although they're in different parts of the world, they share the same language, most of it. But the slang is unique and different. And this lesson should start helping you learn how to, or learn, words that are in movies and television, British shows, and you'll be able to understand them so you can actually get more out of the show. You ready? Let's go to the board. Enough talking, enough. So the first thing I want to show you, okay, British flag, American flag. So here's the British slang. And on this side, we have the American translation. Okay. Um, guy and dude is like a, a slang in American anyway, American English. But I will tell you what the word means in English, and then we'll go over there and see what the translation would be. The first one we have is bloke. It's a noun. In America, we would say guy or dude. So in England, you might say, who's that bloke over there? Or who's, and in America, you say, who's that guy? Dude, I mean, who's that dude, man? I mean, no. <laughs> but you can think closer to guy, but dude is a, an equivalent to it. Mate. Ease me mate. Ease me flat mate. In this case, we mean friend. He's my best mate. Now here we don't use it that way, but you know, mate here means to a male and a female or what have you come together and have relations. But in England, your mate's your friend. It's a good mate of mine. Now this is an old word, so don't shoot me and go to England and go, there's a pretty bird. I love that bird. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, an, it's an older use of the word for female, bird. Sometimes they say lass or lassie, but that's more Scottish and Irish. Bird is there. Now, interesting fact about bird. If you hear someone in England goes, that's for birds, or that's for the birds, they may be saying that's for women or girls. In Canada, for instance, you say that's for the birds, it means it's, it's not important. It's not, uh, it's for a child or it's for a less intelligent person. So just learning this alone, you're like, what? Like, careful, because what they mean in one country, that's for the birds, just it means it's for women. Doesn't mean they're saying stupid. Okay, this is why we want to learn this. Okay, fit. If you've watched any American television, you've got guys like, uh, like Tom Cruise or Chris Helmsworth or The Rock, and they're all fit. Whoa, mm. right? Okay, cool. <laughs> but in England, fit has another meaning it's an adjective, and it means good looking. That bird's rather fit, right? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they might mean also she is athletic, she's in good shape, but they will commonly say, that's a fit looking jacket. Now, here's one you don't have. In the US right now, people are talking about their fits. How's my fit looking? And they mean outfit. Cool, how cool is that, right? So they go, my fit looks pretty good today. In the US, they're saying my outfit looks good. So you better watch and listen carefully to who is speaking. In England, fit means good looking, it also can mean athletic. In America, fit can be just your outfit. They shorten the word and being athletic. Cool? See, that's why you come here for the good stuff. <clears throat> chuffed. You know, Josh looks rather chuffed when he got that goal, right? Hey, 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 hey. What the hell is chuffed? It means pleased or when you're happy with yourself. I got the promotion. You got the promotion. Don't he look rather chuffed, that guy there, right? My mate got the promotion. He's happy with himself. So you're chuffed, right? Now that is an adjective. Now pissed. This is where it gets rather interesting again. 
and pissed off. In England, they will use both, being pissed and pissed off. But pissed in England by itself means drunk. Look at that bloke, eh? he's rather pissed. Look at him falling down all over the place there, right? Drunk. <laughs> in America, pissed means angry. I heard Jeff's really pissed about the, what happened in the company. Yeah, he's really angry about that. Now, both will use pissed off to be angry, but in the UK, pissed will be drunk, and American pissed will be angry. Similar, not the same. When we use the pissed off version, they both used. Keep that in mind, right? Hey, you want to go out this Friday and get pissed? I'm not asking you to get angry. <laughs> but let's get drunk. Now, along with being pissed, being miffed. Charlotte was rather miffed that the horse didn't come home. Miffed. <laughs> angry. Upset. Hmm. Look at the word miffed. You can see a little British person shaking when they say it. I'm miffed about that. You know, the constraint and control they have. Okay, miffed. It means to be upset. Our next one is knackered. It's an adjective. And it means very tired or, oh, exhausted. Which I must have been when I added the extra E here. So we don't need an extra E for exhausted because I was very tired when I did this lesson. Forgive me. Interesting fact about knackered. In the old days, a knackery was a place that you took a horse that died and they would make glue out of it. Sorry, vegans, vegetarians, or anyone who's triggered by that. So you can imagine that if you're knackered, it means you are dead tired. Ouch. Okay. So we're very tired in the United States. We're exhausted. And that's knackered. All right. So the next one after we have knackered, being dead tired, we have bollocks. Now that's interesting because bollocks can be a noun or an exclamation. And what do I mean by that? Noun, it's testicles. The things between men's legs, the testes. But as an exclamation, if you want to say something's not true, Jones, uh, <laughs> Jones, uh, well, I'm trying to think of something like, Jones is a fantastic writer, bollocks! <laughs> not true! <laughs> or defensive, if someone says something, you're like, bollocks, I'm not doing it, bollocks, right? Not true, or you can use it as a defensive way of, I am being defensive, I am not going to do what you asked me to do. And that is bollocks. As an adjective for expensive, you know, some of you are young enough or old enough to know this, and some of you don't know it, but there were the Spice Girls and there was Posh Spice. And if you wondered what it was, because it was Sporty Spice, I think it was Flamingo Spice. Might, I'm just joking. <laughs> salty Spice, he was rather salty. Joke, joke, joke. But there was Posh Spice. Posh in English in England means fancy or expensive. That's a rather posh jacket you're wearing there, mate. Right. And you could be saying it looks fancy or expensive. I went to a posh party the other day. Of course, that's not going to be expensive if you're saying a fancy party. All right. And the opposite of posh we got is naff. And that's also an adjective. And this is tacky or worthless. So in this case, it's like, ugh. When someone wears, uh, I don't know, you know, the big gold chain. Uh oh, I don't want the rap community coming after me. But big gold chains and diamond earrings are dripping down and you know, like velvet suits. Like, yeah, hey, look, I'm styling with their gold teeth. And you're like, man, that's tacky. <laughs> but that's naff, right? It's tacky and worthless. Now, not saying that about the rap community. I love you guys, right? I'm not going to say Jay Z or anyone. I don't even know what to say. DMX, love him. Here we've done our 11, see that? Two E's, 11 British slangs, and the American translation. So the next time you're watching a British movie, you'll be able to, when you hear someone go, bollocks, you'll know why he's saying it. You're like, yeah, yeah, he's got big balls. <laughs> Oops, testicles. All right, so we're gonna do what we usually do right now. We're gonna take a break, quick break, and we're gonna go to our quiz, our homework, and that extra magic. So we're back and it's testing time. Now I may give you a few options because you might say, hey, I could also say, and I'm going to say to you, you're a smart person. You're a smart chap, <laughs> bloke. So let's look at the story first. And what I want you to do is take that British slang we learned before and put it in the story here, okay? Then we're gonna go to the extra. Well, I'll teach you a couple of words that I know you wanna know, but I didn't write down, but those are the words you really wanted to know. And that's what you came for. And of course, we'll go through the quote. So you ready? Let's do this. So I went to a party with my best. What's another word for friend? Mate. My best mate. 
Now, there were a few something that had been drinking a lot, and they were proper something. I know you would have an option here, but what I wanted was this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they were proper what? If they were drinking a lot, what would they be? All right, they were proper pissed. And remember, be careful. In America, that would be angry. But in England, that would be drunk. So we got blokes. Now, you could have put birds, but, you know, we're thinking the ladies are nice and respectful. But the, bo the boys that got drunk. 21st century, who knows? But let's go with this one. Next. Tommy and I saw a real... This is a tough one because there's two words that could go here, right? What would you say? Because she's she's in a nice dress. So what do you what would you think it would be? Well, you know she's a dress, so she's probably the noun would be bird, which would be girl or woman. And what are your two options here? What could you say? Well, I looked at this and said, nice dress, and I would say she's posh, suspensive, nice dress. But you could also say, remember, she's attractive. So she could be fit. She could be a fit bird in a nice dress, attractive woman in a nice dress, or a classy woman in a nice dress, right? Nice, expensive dress. Cool. All right, let's do the next one. Tommy asked the girl if she wanted to dance, but she said no because she was what? It could be many things, right? Pissed? She was too drunk? Could be, could be. But she did say... Oh, she didn't say she didn't. But we, I would say this. What would I say? She was knackered. She seemed like a nice girl, right? She was knackered. Now, some of you bad people would say she was pissed. She was too drunk to dance, and you could say that. But let's make it a nice, clean story, shall we? She gave Tommy her number and asked him to call her. The end. A simple story like, what, what are you like, hey, it's free. It's a free video, okay? Simple story. There you go. You got your words. But now for the pièce de résistance, the three words you're waiting for. All right, fancy a nice snog could lead to a shag, eh? Hey, you, sod off. It's me girl. All right, so when we talk about snog, this word here, in America you might be confused with smog, like the year's dirty. No, a snog is not non-romantic kissing. So, you know, you might use a little bit of tongue, the French method. Yes, they like this. Yes, but it's not romantic. So, you know, in the movies are like, oh, oh sorry. Um, no, no, that's like, that's like, you know, the nasty stuff when you're drunk and you drink a lot. That's a snog. Shag. <laughs> if you've watched, uh, what was his name? Uh, it was a British, uh, it was a Canadian who acted like a British man, Austin Powers. He goes, shag, baby, yeah. <laughs> All right. In this case, we're talking about intercourse, sexual relations. As Clinton would say, I did not have sexual relations with that lady. I shagged. <laughs> okay. Now, here's a good one. Sod off, mate. Sod off. It's a, not a nice way. It's an actual rude way of saying get lost. In America, you might say it's, it's sort of like saying F off. All right. Sod off, mate. Now, you could say it in a nice way, which is like, sod off. You're joking, right? Now, get lost, you're joking. You're, you're, that's not real. Or you can tell someone, hey, it's me girl there. Sod off. All right? You and your mate, sod off, leave you. And that means get lost. And I'm not, it's a very, we would say, vulgar or not nice way of saying it. So now you've got three really cool ways of speaking British and sounding cool. Next time you go to the pub or you're in America, hello, Patricia, would you like to snog? Hey? <laughs> if she tells you to sod off, just leave. You got it. She told you. Now, to have some fun, to practice, because if you're learning, you know, uh, you know American English, you want to practice British English, best way to do it, if you don't have a British friend, is watch a British movie. And I'm going to name some of these ones that you might like. This one's really new. Uh, but um, there's Notting Hill, Love Actually, some of these are my favorites, actually. And The Gentleman's pretty good. Watch those and come back and write in the comments below what you think or what you didn't understand. You can put other words, you're like, what does this mean? Why did they say this? Like chips and crisps, not what you think they are, right? You want some chips in England? It's not the same as what you're going to get in America. 
and I'm going to be happy to help you with those ones, okay? Anyway, uh, we have a couple of people on Ingvid, like Jade, Benjamin, and I'm probably forgetting one. Don't kill me, but you can always leave a comment going, don't forget me. <laughs> Jill, I think it's Jill or Gil, yeah. Uh, check out their uh, their videos. They're British. So on Ingvid, you can, like, you come here, you come to the home of English, man. We got Americans, we got Canadians, we got Brits, right? Check out their, their channels on our station and you can learn. So yeah, that's what I mean to say. Support the channel, hit like, hit that notification bell, right? Go watch those guys on Ingvid and uh, come see me again. I have some more interesting lessons for you. Anyway, that's all. Ta-ta. <laughs> British, right? See you later. Right. I'll sort off now. Right? No, I'm not going to get shagged.